Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you a really easy, really strong Vi jungle build for carrying consistently and it revolves around mobility and tankiness. Right now, chem tank is super powerful, honestly too strong. And dead man's and force nature are very strong follow-up items. Their team is ridiculously magic damage heavy. They're all AP champs except for graves. This game, I think would be OP if we went for the chem tank into force of nature. We'd be unkillable and still have great burst damage. The only true downside to chem tank is in a raw fight to the death, you are missing out on a little bit of damage output. So if you're full HP and you're fighting someone full HP, if they have conqueror or lethal tempo, you probably shouldn't do it most of the time. We don't have to worry about that. Nilly went dark harvest. No one on their team went conqueror or lethal tempo. So that shouldn't apply too much this game. You're gonna wanna start W, take hell of blades on impact with eyeball, relentless, coup de grace and alacrity. We're gonna keep this clear nice and tight. I feel like we have a lot of ganks this game. The enemy bot lane's giga gankable and the enemy top lane. I think Graves is pretty gankable even if it is just a Mundo. So we'll do a three camp clear, buff into buff plus Gromp. We'll get our E level two for the shield. Whenever you're using a building and your passives up, you get a juicy shield for three seconds and your W puts it on a lower cooldown. We're going to auto attack E reset, just like that. Graves is playing up. He's not going to be able to kill Mundo very meaningfully. He's going to have to whittle him down over a very long period of time. And as long as Mundo took second wind, it's going to be kind of hard for him to whittle. Because the Doran Shield plus second wind's basically impossible to poke. <laughs> he needs some massive damage like Vein Silver Bolts to do that. Alrighty, level 3, 2 minute 30, full HP. We still have refills. We're gonna walk out behind him, get as close as we can before we queue. Got him with a red buff auto first. Got him with an ignite. Mundo did miss the cleaver, unfortunately. Oh God, he missed both cleavers. Auto attack, E reset. Auto attack, Q reset. Come on, just die. I need something to E on here. That was that was kind of that was kind of wild. Auto attack, E reset, auto attack. There we go. That's the power of Hell of Blades. If someone's already low health, the Hell of Blades burst is just so much better than any other Keystone. Being able to whip out three auto attacks so quickly. I'm not shoving this wave. I'm just keeping it nice and. Frozen for Mundo. That way he can choose to freeze it if he wants. He can build up a nice little lead that way. I am kind of low, so I would like to reset here. First item rush on Chem Tank Vi. Grab boots and then just grab the rubies. You might be tempted to go for an early bomby cinder. It's not necessary on Vi like it is on someone like Warwick. Vi already has great AoE clears with her Q and her E. So having the bomby cinder doesn't do anything very meaningful because it's overall damage output it won't influence our fights with champions which is what we really need so we just went for early mobility instead and double ruby we're gonna max our q first i'm skipping my bot side just because we set up the way for this top we need to get as close as we can as possible before we q auto attack e reset auto attack e reset down he goes not only is your E an awesome auto resetter, it also increases your auto range by a little bit. It doesn't show it, but it does. It's like... I think Nasus Q does the same thing. There's also other empowered auto attack abilities in League that slightly increase the range. I can't think of what they are right now. I guess Warwick Q, that increases it by probably more than Avai E does. Little East bot side. That means I should probably just push into her top side jungle. If she doesn't invade my jungle, she'll fall behind. And even if she does invade my jungle, we'll trade. So it's fine. Biggest mistake people play on Vi is they over farm. If you're playing iron through D4, you don't want to over farm on her because her ganks are so good and consistent. Just get as close as you can before you hit them with your Q. Try to come up behind them if you can. Graves is pushing out again. We'll be going top soon. Azir is not very gankable here in my opinion. Because Karma's so low, he could potentially turn and kill her. Plus, we know Nidalee's in the area somewhere. 
bot side or mid. Making this kind of bad to gank. Plus the zero is like full HP. All significant factors of why I don't really want to gank that. Mundo kept my ward alive. Graves doesn't have flash. We'll run up behind him. He can freeze it from here if he wants to. All right, looks like he wants to push. I'll help him push because I kind of need some XP. I don't want to take any of the minions. Just want to uh, get some juicy XP out of this. That way we can hit level 6 on time. And he gets to crash the wave. So he has a reset option here. He doesn't have to stay if he doesn't want to. And we're both getting roughly 80% of the total XP. And I know people are going to say, no, it's technically like 65. But just look at bot lane. They share XP. And they never really far that far behind in levels compared to the other lanes. Because there is some catch up XP in League of Legends. So as you start to fall two levels or farther behind, you rapidly increase your XP gains. So... When you're splitting XP with someone, you're both basically getting 80% of the total. People say there's always someone in the comments saying that like every time. About how that's not the technical number. It's, it's um, pretty much accurate though. Level six, we could look to go mid here. Nidalee's in the area. She did just kill our top laner. She's likely not gonna be right there. Why R is unstoppable? They can't CC you out of it once you start it. Oh, wow. I always try to cast your sweeper, Rise. You're about to walk past a bunch of bushes. I did it the back end on that one. I wasn't expecting that to be awarded, though. Nidalee's already got her blue buff. Red side should be up. I just want that wave shoved so we can pressure the map. I had to run through. Graves is so far behind. You generally want to gank the, the weakest enemy laner over and over. If you're spending time on bad ganks, it just puts you and your team so far behind. This Graves is easy ganks. Windows going to kill him by himself here. Uh, wish he would have waited. Oh, well. It is what it is. We'll get a plate out of it. We'll get some XP. If I saw where Nidalee was right now, I would go for Harold. My mid laner's dead, though. This wave should freeze for Mundo again. Even though this these minions are slightly more damaged, since it's, on, since it's so close to this side of the wave, Mundo's next wave is going to reinforce sooner, which is going to be really impactful. You want to try to smite it before you make contact. I couldn't though because I didn't have vision of it. We could back for our chem tank soon. Yeah, we could go back at it right now. We'll take blue ground at the same time. Spread our red buff autos and jungle item burn. Plus E AOE and Q AOE. The longer you do charge your Q, it does do more damage. Once you get it up to its maximum range, that's when it will be doing its most damage. It is most important to just land it, though. Oftentimes, holding it and walking on them is the best move as long as you're close because they'll be trying to juke and you'll get even closer. All right, we're going to go ahead and reset even though our R is up. Scrape's going to push this. All right, this is gankable. He's actually pushing. That's a huge mistake on his part. He has Executioner, so he's feeling tough. Hope Nidalee's not here. Okay, she's bot side. Mundo just needs to let this guy push. He needs to bait out a Graves Q. Yep. That's what I was waiting for. I'm going to already get to him. Don't want Mundo to die. Auto attack E reset. The whole point of taking Ignite on Vi so you can win your solo fights. It gives you a massive threat option. Especially if the enemy jungler has a lot of self healing. We're basically sacrificing our bot for top right now. I think it's going to be worth it, though. They don't have the right type of champions to shred down Mundo. The only one who can kind of shred him is the uh, Azir, maybe. But he didn't go for lethal tempo, so. 
I do need to reset. We're sitting on so much gold. We have a full chem tank. Still haven't started the Herald, mainly because our mid lane keeps dying. Even if I know the enemy jungler's bot side, if my mid lane dies, I don't really want to start it. It's kind of risky. For your boot options, you're going to be looking for plated steel caps, but since their team's so magic damage heavy, we'll go for Merc Treads. They don't have, I guess, the Blind Art. Janus Slow. Yeah, we're really just buying the Merc Treads for the magic resist on it. I think a lot more champions need to start taking chem tank in the jungle. Jungle isn't a late game carry role. It's all about the early game and there's not a single jungle item better in the game for ganking than chem tank, guaranteed. The mobility on it is absurdly valuable. We're gonna walk up. Now we still have our Q, auto attack E reset. I wish I had my R. Yeah, they got destroyed, man. That's the chem tank. I got to get straight into graves off of just using chem tank for its movement speed and its uh, slow. He should just go top. Harold scrapes two plates in a sliver, so I'd rather get two plates in a sliver mid than only one plate top. I'm going to probably R just to get to him because he's going to dash. Auto attack Q, auto attack E reset. Since he has a way to dodge my Q, I didn't want to Q first. Oftentimes it is better to lead in with R since they can't outplay that. It's just point and click, they can't. The only way they can outplay it is if they hourglass. Trading bot plates right now, that's okay because we're getting a lot of mid plates for it. Yeah, they lost top turret. And they're basically losing mid turret too. Our bot lane rotated mid because they're getting dumpstered right now. The uh, Nidalee's camp and bot pretty hard this game. They could be on my red buff right now, the team Ojana. They don't have any full items yet. They might have greeted it to just mess with me. All right, they don't seem to be here. Are they on my Krux? All right, they're not on my Krux. Dragon up in 20. Nidalee is going to be dead for dragon spawn. We should definitely group on that. That'd be huge to get. Let's see if there's any plants I can break here. I see there's two of them mid. John is about to walk into me or dragon. Never mind. She's mid for some reason. I think we should just take this as yours top. It feels really bad though because my team's not over here and this is a dragon. I mean an ocean dragon, so it's auto attack slow. I can escape on the back end of it over the wall with my Q. That's the only reason why I'm standing on the inside of it. Yeah, that's free dragon for them. Well played for them for taking it when their jungler wasn't there. It was very greedy of me to start it. I figured we could probably do it and we almost did. Second item rush for Chem Tank Vi. Usually you're gonna to wanna to go for a Sterix. It's gonna make you ungodly tanky and give you some solid damage as well. For champions that are more auto attack based, who need attack speed, you can go for Bork or Wit's End. That's not really what Vi is though. She's on my wolves right now. She's starting my blue buff. That's annoying. I might die here. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to run. I just don't have any teammates there. That sucked. So much damage. This is gonna be a really tough game. I do think we outscale. This is the bright side. Pull these together. We have more CS than Italy. That's pretty cool. We haven't died yet either, so we still have all of our shutdown. The biggest mistake we made was going for Dragon. It was the right play to go for it as a team, but going for it by myself, there's so much risk involved, and sure enough, we ended up losing it. So sad though, because Nidalee spawned in right when Dragon spawned, so in theory, we should have just taken it for free.
No clue why this guy's even here. He's no kill potential and he's behind, just wandering into my jungle. Karma should be mid right now. There's no reason to even be bought for that. The thing is she can't solo like anyone on their team. She's not a full item yet. So her going for the split push is just gonna let them kill her for free and then they're gonna split it while we're down a person. We're gonna camp tank Q. Auto attack, E reset. I'm gonna get the double knock up with my R. Auto attack, E reset. Auto attack Q. Got him. If anyone's in the way of your R, you'll knock them all up. The way Jonna positioned herself was a little clunky there. She got Teemo wrecked by my R. Okay, Grace. Thank you. Appreciate that. He has Hole Breaker. He's going to be giga tanky. I might actually have to get Black Cleaver this game. Hole Breaker gives a ridiculous amount of armor and magic resist on top of all the other stats it provides. It's really two items in one. It's really silly. Graves going to try to get back through CS. Mundo's playing a little bit too far forward, so he keeps dying. The lead we got him through our ganks is starting to to deteriorate. It's only one level up on Graves and less CS at the moment. Team of mushrooms are fun. I need my R before we can get a really nice engage. Their comp's way better for poking with the Janna, Zir, Nid. Our comp has basically no poke on it. Just no cleavers and karma key, which is very minimal. Our comp's more all in with the Ziri set and me, Nundo. What we need to do is just minimize our deads as a team until we can force an all in fight that they should lose. I got probably should go for Jana here. Her Q's on cooldown. Got the double knock. Auto attack E reset. Red smite. Got the Jana arm. We didn't die, so that's kind of worth it. She's their only real tool for. She's their only real tool for not dying once we go in on them. So if her R's on cooldown, they don't have a real disengage. This nidalee is so annoying. Oh, if that Q had landed though. Auto attack E reset. That sucks, man. <laughs> she would have died from our red smite, true damage burn, and an ignite burn, but she had uh, she had Zanyas there. It's unfortunate. We'll go for Force of Nature next. We're gonna need more and more magic resist. Graves isn't showing up in these fights. Force of Nature will be really nice to have. Timo seems like he counters Ziri pretty hard. Her attack range is very short. If he gets his blind on her, she can't. Doesn't seem like she can really do much. Their win con is definitely drag soul. If they get it, this game's gonna get really difficult. Very, very difficult. I love running into Teemo mushrooms. That's my most favorite thing. There's a wave crashing here. No one grabbed it. We missed the XP from Cannon. We use our E to get that one in the front. We got to fight them on next dragon for the soul. Or we got to fight them when they start Baron. John is way out of position. I think this might be a... Oh, yeah. I think we're going to get her here. Auto attack E reset, down she goes. This is a potential Baron here. We're definitely gonna have to turn if the enemies show up. Graves isn't here. Got it kite away from the Azir. 
Auto attack, E reset, get that shield. Almost snatched Nidalee out of the air. That was really dang close. I'm gonna have to reset for the Graves. That's not bad though, we get the Azir. We got maybe some flashes. I don't have that much armor to deal with Graves. He's actually gonna be hard for me to fight, even though I have item advantage. We're gonna Kemp Tank Q. I'm gonna miss it. And he's gonna beat me because uh, Hole Breaker is an item for some reason. Yeah, he's literally, he's winning so hard. He has less items. This hole breaker is actually just insane. We can only go in on him when our passive's up. Whoa, I blocked his hat. I blocked half his auto with the turret, but I still died. Yeah, they, they honestly just need to remove hole breaker. It gives one of, one of the highest HPs out of any item in the game. It gives 50 AD, which is up there. And now it's, giving him 38 armor, 38 magic resist, which is more than chem tank even gives me. So, I don't know. It gives more health than chem tank, more armor, more magic resist, and it gives damage. It just doesn't make sense. And the higher level you are, the more armor magic resist it gives you. It gives up to, I think 60? Yeah, it gives up to 60 armor and 60 magic resist, which is more than any tank item in the game, collectively. And there's not a single tank item that gives 120 defensive stat. It's gonna take Mundo a while to kill that. They get Baron for free since I died. Graves with his massive one item power spike. Oh boy. Two two and a half item Mundos is having big issues trying to kill one item Graves. You're way out of position, Azir. Our R is up. I'm gonna Q him into the Mundo auto attack. Q reset. If these guys can't fight us. It's just the Cancer hole breaker. If I had hole breaker, I would be able to solo Graves. That's the stupid thing. I mean, he has fleet. That's not a real keystone. That keystone's basically useless. It gives you zero damage, very little healing in the short term. And he wins that fight even though I have Hell Blades and a massive item advantage. So dumb. Jeez. What an item, man. I might build that after my Force of Nature. It could be worth it. It'll let me match Graves on the split push because he's not going to group anymore. They don't win team fights, as you see. Unless Janna Giga pills, their team will just melt underneath our engage. She's not going to do it. Set, oh my god. They might actually get Drag Soul now. Set lost half his health from a spear. Well, I guess we're given Drag Soul. That's cool. Zero decides my jungle's more important. And Set's recalling. That's neat. It is what it is. Still winnable. It is only a wind soul. Ziri can't really beat anyone in a solo fight right now, and I don't think Muno can solo Graves. Neither one of them should really be split pushing. She can't get away from him either if he just uses his R. The wind soul speed up. I missed my Q, that was tragic. Uh, there's a lot of mushrooms here. Yeah, this game's gonna be really hard from here on out. This is gonna be a struggle to win it. 
I guess it just depends on how tanky Mundo can get against their team. I gotta go hold breaker from here. I'll go hold breaker into uh, maybe a thorn mel for he'll cut on the graves. The thing is, if I don't match graves, no one will be able to. And since he has fleet, if I have hold breaker, I should be able to solo him. Give him that ignite. And he's still winning is the funny thing, right? He's a fleet graves with two items. I'm tank by with three items and ignite advantage and keystone advantage and HP advantage. I have literally every advantage you can have. And he's just like, yeah, no, nah, I'm winning this. <laughs> it's hilarious. Gotta reset, get our health back. Can't afford anything very good here. See if we can land a big multi R. Going for the Jana. Oh, that's cool. I accidentally walked into that. Not really seeing any mushrooms. We could crush Nidalee. If she had Hold Breaker, we might lose to her though. <laughs> oh man. More HP than tank items, more armor magic resistant tank items, and it gives damage. It's really funny. We can play for Eldar and definitely win. Eldar is way more important than any Dragon Soul is. Even if they have Flame Soul and they're winning pretty hard, if you get Eldar, it's usually a free win. Eldar is basically triple the damage a, a Flame Soul will give you. Mundo getting caught out a little bit. I don't think Karma is going to be able to escape. Mundo might be able to because he's so tanky. Also is passive. Oh, there's no, not a blue buff here. Time to reset. They have quite a bit of self-healing. Oof, I'm dead. I shouldn't have done that. I just into... John of Glacial is really, 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 really strong. She hits you with her point and click Zephyr and then you can't move. Mobilizing enemy champion, or is it? Does she have to hit you with her tornado? It might actually be her tornado. I don't know if her Zephyr applies that. We can't afford anything very good here. All we can get is Phage. They get Baron. Still, we're playing for the Eldar here. I'm gonna grab a Bramble Vest. It might seem like a stupid purchase, but uh, I think it's gonna be worth it. Timo's healing a lot off of his Rift Maker, and Graves is healing a lot off his life still. Plus, Jana R is a big heal. Red buff. Chem tanks up. Let's see if we can find something juicy. Nope, nothing juicy. Uh, I don't know if I have a flank on them or not here. Went straight through that. Auto attack E reset. There she goes. Auto attack E resets. That was huge though, getting the John. Now I gotta go fight Graves. Hopefully, team doesn't in underneath turrets. Might be able to fight Graves. Guess we'll find out. Eh, we probably can't. Maybe with Karma, right?
he doesn't kill her first. He almost won that one versus two, and he didn't dodge a single one of my Qs. He's just face tanking everything and still <laughs> almost wins, and we have ill guy. Oh, man. I feel like uh, Holebreaker falls in the same category as ZZ Rot Portal. It's just a outrageous item that they're going to have to remove because it's just too game breaking. It's two items in one. It really is. This is kind of bad. This Janus Glacial is on cooldown. My R is up. I could find a flank. Got him. Auto attack E reset. He has my red smite burn on him. And both of my teammates died. Yeah, I'm just dead here. Teemo with the big outplays. Oh, maybe I'm not dead. I think they get Eldar, though. That's the thing. It's going to be really hard to fight them once they get that. Yeah, I just can't. I don't have Smite. I don't have R. That's unfortunate. I guess there's going to be one big final fight here. That's going to decide the game. Mundo going in. Can he pinch graves? Nice. Okay. As they take our base. Timo's going to be so strong. They're still able to stay on top of me. Uh, if we can stall out Timo, maybe. I need to get to the bush so minis don't cancel my recall. We're pretty freaking tanky. I think they just have a way better comp and they had better, lack of a better word, better players. Like overall. Yeah, they're not doing mean, that much meaningful damage to me and they have Eldar. I need more magic resist. I'm gonna have to R Jana here. Nice. Oh, she's out of mana herself. When does her Eldar end here? It just doesn't. Her Eldar just doesn't end. It's up for a while. It's not even close to ending. Oh, I'm just dead. Unfortunately, that does wrap up this game, but I will show you guys the graph so you can get an idea of how tanky and how much damage we were doing. Looking at damage dealt to enemy champions, we had one of the highest damages dealt in the whole game, nearly the second most in the whole game on Tank Vi and the most on our team. For damage taken, we had taken 42,000 for self mitigated damage. We had taken 72,000. So we mitigated nearly twice as much as we took for runes. Our Hell Blades was activated 95 times. Hell of Blades did 934 damage, maxed out eyeballs, maxed out relentless, could grossed at 760, and we finished alacrity by the love minute 40 second mark. All in all, tank by jungle, really dang strong. But at the end of the day, you need your teammates to pull some weight if you're going to get a dub. So that, that's really the same on all junglers right now in this meta.